Good morning. Good morning. Good I'm doing this. I'm not sure why. We're gonna keep it going from our kitchens. We Alexa. don't have to do. uh -huh. <laughs> Somebody's chirping. We have Alexa right there. Lauren Fox and Corey LaJoy. Um, well, I'm sure the boxes are different layout on your computer than they will be on the actual broadcast. Where am I on your computer right now? Right below me. Oh, I'm right. Of, okay, whatever. I just wanted to remind everybody, we are presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts and brought to you by Hercules Tires. Yay! Thanks stuff. for those guys. And Schluter Systems. Schluter Systems. Thanks to everyone for sticking with us. Yeah, through this hard time. Uh, I mean, cabin cabin fever is a real thing. And I'm even been like getting out and I'm still like ready to, ready to go. Yeah, you're a new dad, man. You have a lot going on over there. There's a little baby uh, keeping you busy, I guess. Well, I mean, you, you literally live <clears throat> in an hour and a half block at a time. Because by the time you change them, feed them, like burp them, do all that, then it's you have an hour and a half until you have to do it all over again. <clears throat> so he doesn't allow, I'm looking at him right there. There he is, the stinker. Um, <clears throat> he, doesn't, he doesn't allow a lot of uh, personal time, but it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but oh shoot. All right, now we're good. Yeah. It's you even just, use your webcam like a dad. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm doing everything like a dad now. Be honest. Have you and Kelly, because you're always honest, have you and Kelly had any new kind of fights or new kind of uh, stress being new parents? Because it can't be all sunflowers and rainbows. Uh, well, when you have, when you're running low on sleep, it's easy to get irritable with each other when. You know, when he's crying or she lives in irritability. Yeah, that's what she just said. She said, be honest. So I'll be honest. She's irritable 24 7. I'm uh, just trying to, to hold my weight around the house, trying to help out where I can. But unfortunately for uh, Kelly, I don't have things hanging off my chest that provide nutrition for Levi. I literally just have to, uh, uh, change diapers and do what I can. But Kelly has to take all the night feedings. I've been staying up, like I said, from like 9 p.m. till midnight. That's usually when he's awake and fussy and crying and complaining. And then she takes from midnight till about nine in the morning. And I get to, I get a decent amount of sleep. I'm actually sleeping in the guest bedroom. So. And it's begun. We're, we're almost, it has begun. We're almost like roommates right now. We're not even like married. We're just like roommates. Like, hey, it rents through next week. Just spend me a couple of bucks. You owe me half for groceries. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Well, we're excited. Lauren, if you have any advice for them, this would be a good time to give them some new parent tips before uh, he starts getting his own apartment. Over in Davidson. <laughs> It'll get better. It'll get better. I had to teach Andrew. Like, he knew nothing about being a dad or having a kid. So that's what I would get fussy with is like, I nannied. I knew how I had a sister who was 13 years younger than me. I kind of knew like what to do with the baby. Andrew knew nothing. So it was like I was caring for this tiny little human and also trying to teach my husband how to be a father. He's since picked it up just fine, but I was like, yeah, you have to bathe her and feed her. So this, this, this week, um, our hot water went out. You don't realize how much you rely on hot water when, so, until you don't have it, especially when you do everything inside your house. Um, so we were two days without um, hot water. Buddy Mike came over and stuck some parts in there and fixed it up. So hopefully that still lasts because taking an ice cold shower is not fun. Oh. <laughs> like it's just when it rains, it pours. But overall, I think the time has been good. I mean, it's been what, six, how many weeks? Five weeks now? 
we've been locked down or whatever? It's um, been a, about a month, right? Yeah, I think even a little more. It feels like a year. Like, it is unbelievable how long it's felt. But it's cool seeing, like, looking over and, like, literally seeing his head get bigger, his body get bigger, and just how much weight he's put on. So I've, uh, I'm learning how to be a dad with a lot of time to spend. So I saw Kelly made a special appointment for the little guy there. Yeah, so unfortunately for him, um, when he was in the NICU, they don't circumcise babies in the NICU. You have to do an out of patient after you leave because um, they don't want any infections or anything bad to happen to him when he's in there. So when we left the NICU, brought him home, our pediatrician wasn't taking any outpatient uh, appointments. So, uh, un so next week he's going to get snip snip uh, his, little, his little Peter. So he's going to be, he's going to be, I would imagine it's not going to feel very good. I don't remember what it was Whoa. like. But I'm sure that it's not going to be a pleasant experience for little Levi next week. This is a bad idea. <laughs> Just wait till he's 18. He can do it himself if he's, you know, in the mood. Just sharpen some scissors up and put some numbing on it, like a like what is that stuff you put bent? What is that stuff you put on your teeth when you have a toothache? Or or a gel? Or gel. <laughs> yeah, rub some orange gel on it. Hey, is Kelly there? Yeah. Is she like close to come hang out? Uh, she, yeah, she's throwing all of her bottles and stuff in the in a sanitizer. sanitizer. We, we might. always like to say hi to you, Kelly. If you're if you're not busy, Corey says you're not busy. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> hi. How are you? How is this all working out for you? Be honest, because Corey. Corey has a way of shining everything. He makes everything seem great. He's the king of stacking pennies, after all. There's he makes that situation look like it's working. What's really happening? There's I see him staring thing. into the stove, looking at pizzas. What's that thing? What do you say? What's the whole pizza routine where he's staring into the stove? It's called too much time on your hands. Anybody who is a pizza connoisseur knows that there is a less than two minute window that you have from where your crispy pizza, to not when your crispy. pizza is perfectly cooked to a crisp perfection or when it's cooked too much and it's burnt. And you don't want it to cook too little bit because then it's not crunchy enough. So I have to turn the light on in my stove and watch until the cheese is perfectly crisp and the crust is not quite burnt, but it's a little bit like tannish black. And you only have – Let's, let, it's less than two minutes. It's probably a 20 second window. It's make or break for your wow. perfect oven pizza. Uh, and, and I've actually gotten pretty good at it, I believe. <laughs> Kelly, what is Corey's best trait as a new father in your opinion? Um, he's patient with me when I lose all my patience with him. So that's nice because I'm I'm definitely a little bit bitchy, un unhinged these days. <laughs> oh. All right, I have another marriage question for you, Kelly. I'm, I'm Who decided on the guest room? Whose idea was this? Was this a Kelly idea or a Corey idea? For what? The guest for room. the guest room. Mine. You kicked them out. Yeah. Well, I put the baby in the bed in like a co-sleeper with me and we have a queen bed and it like it just does not work if mm. both of us are in there that's a good idea yeah lauren is thinking this might be something her and andrew are going to do for life how do you feel about that kelly <laughs> for no reason other than they just don't want to sleep together yeah <clears throat> but otherwise like i get at least a decent chunk like we've realized if Corey brings him up at 12 and just puts him right on my chest, he'll like pass out so I can get like a four to five hour chunk. Mm. And without that, um, an evil villain the next day. Yes. And that day. I, I do have more questions. I've been waiting to question Kelly on all these things. Kelly, can you also confirm, is Corey spending too much time on the simulator? He pretends he's not. I believe he's racing a lot more than he's letting on. 
No, he's not on it when I'm awake. If he's on it, it's after I go to sleep and I don't know about it. It's almost like Levi knows that. Levi I, doesn't like it. Levi doesn't like it. So I try to bring him down in his little pillow. I sit him next there. I'll fire the computer up and I'll, I'll run for like 15 minutes and then he just goes crazy. Starts crying, no consoling him. Try to give him his binky. He doesn't want it. As soon as I literally I pick him up, come upstairs, done, done crying. He's good. He just doesn't. He he likes. He doesn't like I racing. Probably just as much his as his old man. So that's where we're at. I and I I really wish that I can spend eight hours a day on it like some other guys are. But he look, he's pissed off. We're even talking about it. Yeah. But I just can't spend eight hours a day on it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. I do need one piece of advice from Kelly and then let you do whatever you need to do today. Kelly, I've been fighting with your husband for probably three years now, consistently, you know. And I can't seem to communicate with him. I don't know how to connect with him. Here's, here's my question. He asked me two weeks ago, how, how do I get more listeners for this podcast? Daryl, you know what you're doing. You're a genius. And rightfully so. That was a nice thing to say. He said, how do I get more people into this podcast? And I said, Corey, maybe mention it when you're talking to other humans, you know? And then I saw him on the Instagram for Fox Sports, NASCAR on Fox, doing a whole little Corey segment. He didn't mention the podcast, not even one time. Lauren can tell you, this is a fight we've had probably 20 times. And Kelly, I just don't understand how to connect with your husband and explain to him that if he would promote his projects, people would know about them. Can you help give me some advice? <laughs> well, Corey has selective hearing, so he's probably ignoring you or on Twitter when you're talking to him, not paying attention. And he doesn't do what you tell him to do. I've tried for the past seven years, Daryl. Here we are. Do you think that would be a good piece of advice to promote his projects so people will know about them? Then yeah, maybe you could wear a... Why don't, why don't you show the fine folks your, your Sunday money rock somebody made you? Oh, yeah. Could you grab that? I would love to. Yeah, Kelly, you go do it. You can wear a Sunday well, money t-shirt when you're on the NASCAR on Fox Instagram, Corey. I, I should have. I should have worn my Sunday money shirt, which are still available on CorleyJoyRacing.com slash merch. Boy, he can promote that if he's making a dollar. <laughs> I don't know who made this. But <laughs> Somebody made us a Sunday money weather rock. I put it outside, and when it's wet, that means it's raining. Uh, when it's hot, that means it's sunny. And then if it's blown away, it means it's really windy. So thank you Wow. for my great rock. Corey, you do understand you're promoting your podcast on your podcast. It actually, it, it actually charges up like one of Danica's. Um, uh, moon rock, the moon rock. Yeah. It's charged up with lunar energy. And I feel it. Yeah, you have to put it under your pillow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna charge. I'm gonna charge it up next time. Hey, next time you do something, can you hold up your rock and show people so they know that you have a podcast? Yes. Yeah. I'm just gonna carry my rock in my pocket. <laughs> Lauren's left <laughing laughs> the chat. <laughs> Corey, have you seen these Danica Patrick posts? We haven't talked about her in a while. I, I can't with Danica Patrick right now. What do you mean you can't? She's, she is doing those poses that like only Simone Biles can do. She, those yoga poses she does in handstands are pretty impressive, I, I will say. All she keeps talking about in every post is how to be a better version of yourself and how to be more accepting and how to grow and how to, to learn new things. She was the most difficult interview the entire time I did interviews, the most uncomfortable interview the entire time I did interviews. She was standoffish. And now suddenly, since she decided to become a podcaster, she's decided to be friendly. It's funny how that works. We need to get guests on the show. Boy, I don't we're talk, we were talking about Danica Patrick's newfound um, calm. Oh yeah, I heard. I was looking at it. How do you feel about it, Lauren? I don't follow her. She's too out there for me. So I don't really keep up with what she's doing. When she left, good riddance. 
I was done. She wasn't, she didn't leave a, a great reputation in the sport with how she dealt with media or fans or you know, teammates. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do hope a competitive woman, Haley Deegan seems to be the one that's going to carry the, carry the flag. Um, and she's going to get there. She's going to have all the opportunities and drive in good cars and be surrounded by good people. Uh, so it'll be sooner rather than later. Some, some women will have somebody to cheer for in the cup series, probably four years. She'll be there. I loved the idea of Danica. I tried real. I always try really hard to prepare for interviews. I wanted to like make it fun and I wanted it to be about her. She just was very difficult to work with. I found her very hard to talk to. And now every time I see a post, I feel like it's just like a little dagger twist to, I can never interview her again. And she was the worst. And now she's an interviewer. It drives me crazy. Hey, people change, man. That's true. People change. Yep. Speaking of people changing, some things don't change in our sport. We have to talk about this Gray Galding pay to play scandal that Bob Pockris broke. It's not a scandal. It was it was coming out all through the uh bankruptcy filings of BK Racing. Um Gray and I were at BK at the same time. Um he was signed to the chartered car, the 23 car. He had Dr. Pepper and all that, but from the files that came out, it looked like uh, they guaranteed $2 million for 20 races of sponsorship, which is, do the math, what's that, Daryl? 100 grand a race. So they could in turn, that locks them in for those 20 races. So they go in and turn and try to sell it on the back end to replenish that. So if they sell a race for 50 grand, then they're taking a 50 grand, they're paying, they're still paying 50 grand, right? So um, obviously, I think it was 1.36 uh, 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 they still owed. So uh, that's, that's quite a lot of money. 66000 was it? 600 I don't know. Greg Galding Racing. I don't know if his dad, Dwayne, is uh, – on that or if it's directly on gray 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 if nobody that knows uh gray is actually a really good good kid and i think he's a, a underrated race car driver just um sometimes you have to make bets on yourself uh like he did there and it didn't pan out um and it's just it's hard to sell cup races and it's hard to sell cup races for uh 100 grand it's hard to sell them for 75 grand that's why when you have good partners it's it's important to take care of them and unfortunately for gray gray is the one that's you know looking bad through all that and he lo he's looked bad since it's happened because he was publicly yanked from the car right and i was a little bit of the beneficiary because i was racing over there at the same time and i was bringing at the time i had a zero sponsorship but I, we were acquiring some stuff throughout the course of the year um and I started driving 23 and for whatever reason, I don't know if, I, I, I don't know. It was just, I guess I got lucky in whatever situation I was in. I don't know if Ron liked me or whatever, whatever it was, but um, that's where the relationship with these Sluter guys came from. And, um, you know, I, I've always thanked Ron about, he didn't pay me for like eight months, the last eight months I was driving for him. But, but I, that's, my, that's my question. He had $2 million apparently. He couldn't use that money to pay you. Here's here's the uh, here's the thing that majority of people, when they're walking around in October, November, December, talking about how much sponsorship money they have, it's usually about a third of what the actual number they're talking about, and it's always a surprise when all of a sudden somebody doesn't show up. Right? That's like that's owners know that every year people are gonna be walking around saying they have two, three, four, five, ten million dollars. But when the time comes to write the check, they can't do it. That's why some a lot, a lot of guys put the owners in a bad spot to where they're going to say they they have two million dollars, for example, and they only pay six hundred grand. Now what's the owner going to do? Now he's got driver points. Now he's got seat inserts. He's got fire suits. All this stuff. It's just cheaper for to keep that person in the car rather than make the, make the switch. And that's what unfortunately a lot of people do. 
to leverage the team to st- keep to get in and then to stay in. It's a kind of a, a tough part of the sport, but it's always been around. And cash right now has always been king, but even more so now because the expense of what it costs to run a cup car, somebody has legitimate cash, it can definitely sway somebody's uh, decision on who to put in the car. Lauren, does it shock you that a team that was running as bad as BK was running, which they were terrible, by the way, that they're spending $2 million of personal money just to run in the back? Yeah. That's pretty crazy. It's all what I've learned since I've been involved with all of this is that there's a lot of funny money. Like, it's just like, I don't know. It, that's crazy to me. And it's just about optics, I guess, is, oh, yeah, I've got $2 million, but you don't actually have $2 million. I don't know. Weird, weird stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could have handshake commitments on whatever, but a big difference between somebody saying they're going to do something and actually putting the check in the in in the owner's account um and that's that's what makes it tough for the free agents every every silly season because everybody's walking around saying they have an exuberant amount of sponsorship dollars but at the end of the day they don't produce it but uh it's a lot of people believe that because there, there's hope, right? It's, uh, you know, you hope that it comes through and some of the relationships actually materialize. Um, but that's why, I mean, you know, some guys have come from wealthy families that they can guarantee it. You know, mm-hmm. I like Matt Tiff, but Matt Tiff was a guy whose family spent a lot of money to, uh, to put him behind the wheel of a race car. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, anybody listening and can rifle off 10 people who have done the same thing. But, um, you know, it's nothing new in the sport. It's just trying to uh, maneuver through some of the BS and some of the politics behind it to just get yourself around good people. That's why uh, I like dealing with Archie. Archie straight up. He tells me what he's got on his team side with sponsorship. And I've got, I play my cards straight up with him and of what I got for sponsorship and, and it works out. And then, whatever races we have open to sell, then it's, you know, on its, its team responsibility as well as mine to, to drum up some sponsorship. That's why uh, you got to have two people that are willing to make it work. Very interesting story. It was uh, interesting to hear about because we've talked about it for a long time. You've talked about it for a long time. So uh, it was interesting to see it come out uh, in the press. doesn't happen. I was, I was, uh, a little bit surprised to see it come out because I thought that that was general knowledge already. Um, but apparently once this bankruptcy deal actually goes through the court and the employees that weren't being paid, um, are taken care of, um, you know, he, he owed me quite a bit of money, but I didn't file uh, a claim or whatever, just because, um, some of the relationships there, Fluter being one, um, has came with me to, the you know next chapters of my career so I wanted to make sure that the guys who are working on the cars uh who weren't getting paid for the same amount of time I was uh were compensated you know because I'm doing well and like I said if it wasn't for Ron Devine and BK giving me a chance I wouldn't be I, I w- absolutely would not be in the garage for sure so um hopefully that all gets rectified hopefully Gray finds something because he's worked hard enough at it to where he deserves to be in a car but you know it's just Sometimes the the ball doesn't fall your way. It's just unfortunately how uh, how the business works. But if Lauren and I were going to be race car drivers and we go to the same team because we're you know trying to get a ride, and she says she has five million dollars, and I say I have four million dollars, is it really just is it like a game of chicken until they run out of time and they just have to figure out who has more of the money? In some cases, a lot a lot of a lot of decisions aren't driven 100% by money. That's sometimes a deciding factor, but um, a lot of the, you know, there's obviously talent and capability is taken into account because at the end of the day, you can have $10 million, but if you wreck every every week, then you're going to burn right through that money fast as somebody else that has $2 million and who is finishing higher in points, who's getting more purse money and not tearing up equipment. So, you know, the, the owners, there's, every owner has a gauge of, you know, 
what they need to supplement their team sponsorship. Um, you know, and they also have their own racing budget. They have to, uh, to make sure they're not in the, in the red, just like any other business. If you go in the red, you're not going to be able to be a viable business for too long. So, you know, you got some teams spending between five to 7 million, uh, like ours. And you got teams like front row spending 11 to 13. And then you got the teams that are winning races with factory support getting 30 million bucks. Who is doing dishes? Yeah, Kelly's in there really. Kelly's getting after it. Getting at it. Tell your wife to pipe down. No, just kidding. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, so that's what's going on now. There's a, there's a big race going on right now, Corey, and we're not talking about uh, iRacing this time. There's a race going on between the states to see who is going to be able to host the first NASCAR race. All these different governors who's, are. Who's your bet? Are, who's your bet, Daryl? Uh, I think that the safest and best idea would be Charlotte. Everybody's here. Everything is here. We can move stuff around easily. Like they should do Charlotte and just see how it goes and see really how safe it can be when we're not having to move people hundreds of miles. We can move them ten miles. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, and obviously that seems to be what makes the most sense, but I feel like for the sake of time, they're looking at running possibly two weekends before that. Um, I'm here in Homestead, um, Homestead for the first one, whether that be a double header or not, I think they're going to have to work through that. The problem is, is if you get, if you do anything more than a one day show, you can't guarantee what the conditions of the, hotels that the guys are staying at because all it takes is one right all it takes is one to infect three to infect the half the side of the garage and then all of a sudden now we're shut down again uh, so I, I don't i don't know i don't know if it's a i think it's part partially a race against time is, is kind of what they're looking at it because i think they're planning on another lockdown i guess or, or they're planning uh, for the worst with if there's another outbreak once everything opens back up they want to try to get at least a couple races under the belt to say they did to get some teams paid for so they can keep the doors open so the the t tracks that I'm hearing are Homestead, Daytona, Darlington, Atlanta tracks in the southeast um, and go ahead from everything else that I'm hearing is go ahead and take the schedule that was already a the 2020 schedule and just crumple it up and throw it out because whatever tracks are available per weekend will be the ones that we raced in. It doesn't matter if Daytona is in August, it could be here in three weeks, right? Or they could run three races at Daytona, one of the road course, one of the big track. They could run three races at Bristol. They could run it. It's a very fluid situation right now. I'm interested to see what they do. And I don't think it's going to be a set schedule. I think it could change. I think they're going to set it month by month and be like, these are the next three weeks we're running. These are the next three weeks we're running. Yo. Can you get on an airplane and fly to wherever you're going and sit next to all those people in a flying germ tube? I mean, I think that if everybody has tests really available, I mean, they're also going to keep held down to a bare minimum. I'm, I'm hearing no pictures for at least the first two months possibly, which I'm on the side that might hurt the integrity of the actual product of the race. But I don't really think that we're concerned about that. I think we're concerned about just getting cars on the track and getting TV money divvied out to the, to the league and to the teams to keep guys paid. That's the first and foremost priority. I think I should just, you should bring a jack. And then like, if your tire blows, then you get out of the car Jack the car up, change the tire, uh, just like they used to do. I think we should. Uh, I think that we should just start the race at our shop. That we mm -hmm. don't see anybody. Drive to Charlotte. Yeah. Run around. If we run out of gas, get out, fill it up, finish it, and drive the cars back to the shop. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that way nobody has to work on it. Nobody has to touch it. Nothing. I like it. That's a little bit outlandish, but. Uh, how crazy would it be, which there seems to be a good possibility that there's no practice before the first race we go back. We've been sitting on the couch for two months, and literally 
They expect us to fire up the cars and go qualify for one lap at Charlotte, and you're going 190 miles an hour. But Corey, we've had i racing. It's the oh same yeah, thing. oh yeah. I forgot how how realistic that is. Yeah, you really. Uh, I mean, guys that have been doing it for eight hours a day, those guys should be fine. So until the G-force hits you and their next flop out like this, hanging out of the right side window because they haven't worked out because they've been playing playing video games for 10 hours a day. But um, those guys are going to be in for a rude awakening if uh, if they're not working out and staying strong because I think it's easy to forget the physical toll any track has on your body, especially with the high downforce stuff. Like when we go to Charlotte, when you're wide open, the whole pretty much the whole lap, those guys are going to be pretty tired. And I've been working out a lot, and I'm gonna, I plan on being pretty tired. It's a tough call. I, I know everybody wants to go back. I, I would like to have a job again. It would be cool to have a job. That sounds fun. But I just think it's so risky, and uh, I, I just really hope for the best that this doesn't blow up in our face. But I get that they need to go back. I get that eventually things are going to have to start up again, right? So – if they think they can do it safely, I'm interested, but it makes me nervous for you, man. I mean, obviously, I'll take a lot more precaution than I probably would have if I didn't have a, a five-week-old at home. Otherwise, uh, it's not coming home. Yeah, she'll make me sleep in the motor home, like at the shop or something. Um, you can stay on my couch, Corey. I don't want to stay on your couch. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I'll wear a mask. Um, I'll probably – carry around a bottle of sanitizer in my pocket I, and just try to I mean I just sit in the rental car if I have to outside the garage and then when you get going and I'll show up and put the helmet on and go because I think that's going to be it's going to be it's going to be weird man it's going to be no driver introductions right I don't know what they're going to do for a driver's meeting they just get on the PA system and be like all right drivers just don't pass below the yellow line but Lauren's a good person to ask about this, or Alexa even, both of you. I mean, people don't understand, even if they have a little idea, they've been to a race, I don't think they understand the personnel it takes to put on an event. And it has nothing to do with concessions and people in the stands. Take all the fans away. Realistically, how many humans does it take to put a broadcast on, even if it's remote? Yep. Well, you still have to send camera guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, a dozen or so of those just covering the broadcast. Somebody has to cover the broadcast. Some, you have to have officials. Right. You can't have a NASCAR sanctioned race without officials. Yep. You have to have medical staff there so Corey doesn't end up injured. Right. I mean, where, where you know, at what point, how, who's essential is my question, Alexa. Right. I don't know. I mean, I know for MRN, we probably, I mean, I don't know how we would broadcast the race remote. I think that that would take away from the quality of our broadcast. Cause when you're listening to the race on the radio, you want to hear the cars going by in the background. So, I mean, say you have, you know, a mile and a half track or a Daytona. I mean, you probably need eight to 10 people because you need turn announcers, booth announcers, you know, pit road people, but if there's no pit road, if they don't have pit crews, then I guess you can eliminate two or three people. Yeah. But there's, there's going to be people that they can't like reduce the number of people that travel. Yeah. That you can't have. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. My, My concern is, is that we get so infatuated by just showing up to the racetrack to put cars on track that we and hurt the integ- the integrity of the product right whether it be on tv with hot dog breaks instead of live pit stops right that's not going to be very exciting let's be honest um, when there's a five minute break and nobody loses any time on pit road and you go to commercial break and you come back out and you line up there's no varying for positions you don't have guys missing lug nuts you don't have guys Speeding on pit road. Front, speeding on pit road. Um, you have a lot of variables that play into the race to make that makes it exciting versus just driving around in circles. And I think that we're going to be at the very lowest form of product 
just for the sake of checking the box to get some TV money and get some teams paid for, which if that's what we got to do, we got to do. But hopefully this it doesn't last long enough to where the product is – because everybody's going to be watching. There's going to be a, more people watching the race, I'm assuming, than there will be for the Daytona 500 with the first race we go back. And if we don't put on a good show, then – it's not going to be – people are, aren't going to keep tuning back in. So whenever we do have the people captivated and we have their eyeballs on the TV or on the radio with MRN, we got to make sure we can deliver. My other question, Corey, the crew chief – let's say the crew chief obviously will, will be there probably on top of a box, right, or no? Yeah, they're talking about five people per car. I mean, you got to have people to change tires and put fuel in it for the hot dog race. So you have five people, and then you have to have, I guess, NASCAR would have to have race communications there, right? You have to have that. Yeah, I mean, they'll have, they'll have a trimmed-down version of officials, probably. They got the tech cars all the same. So they have two to three people per station with the laser platform and the height sticks and the scales. So, you know, NASCAR is probably going to be looking at 25 officials. I don't know, but um, it's certainly going to be trimmed down. And it's going to look way different than what we've ever seen at the racetrack before. But um, it's also times that we've – and conditions and variables we've never had to mess with before either. Crazy times. Well, we'll see how it shakes out. I guess we can take a commercial break and come back and touch a couple other topics. Now that we're joined by Poppy, we can hear what's going on with her eating hand sanitizer. Don't No, don't do that. That's That's okay. We'll be back after this break. And we're back on Sunday Money. Time to talk our favorite topic. It's taking the nation by storm. It's time for iRacing with Corey LaJoy. Um, well, Byron won. Yeah. And that was your iRacing update. Yeah, what I else are we talking about? <laughs> um, so here's where I'm at with iRacing. I think I'm going to do Talladega this week because they don't have some bogus last chance qualifying race with all the good people in the last chance qualifying race and half the field can't even run a lap in the main race. This week, they're starting, I don't know, 39 cars or something. So I'll be there for no other reason than to get my partners on TV uh, because I don't, I just don't have time to get good at it. Talladega, uh, obviously, is a track where there's probably a lot of luck, especially in the virtual world, to where I don't have to sit there for three hours a day to to get the visual cues and get the feel of the car and work on the setup. It's just trying to not wreck. Um, similar to how it is in real life, but I'm literally going to probably not practice at all and just jump in there Sunday morning and then go um, and draft and try to get Schluter systems on TV. <laughs> After that, I probably will sell my iRacing simulator because I'm tired of talking about it, tired of seeing it. And if I don't have a simulator, then nobody can talk to me about wanting to do it uh, or ask me why I'm not doing it or ask me why I'm not uh, I'm a race car driver not spending – six hours a day racing virtual race cars. So if I don't have one, uh, I can just divert that conversation. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I'm, I know I'm in the minority when it comes to my thoughts on iRacing. Um, it's fun when you're, hey, he, I I'm telling you, he doesn't like it. He's like a dinosaur. Um, it's like Jurassic I, World over there. So, you know, I'll I'll do a couple of races or whatever, but uh, I just I don't know. I'm not I'm not a video game guy. Um, Did you watch? And I don't I, I don't enjoy. Uh, I just don't enjoy doing it. Um, even like I'm not that bad. I I just don't have fun doing it. I don't know why that is. Um, so if anybody wants an iRacing simulator, hit me up. Corey, t describe your your feelings. Corey, how much it is you're listening to this uh, the problem is they're not they're, they're not very they're not very cheap 
I got a I got a middle of the road one, and I probably got five six grand in hardware, computer, steering wheel, monitors. Corey, a little less than Denny's. Denny's is probably forty five grand. Couldn't you donate it to Andrew for Andrew's new bedroom so he has something to do when Lauren makes him stay in a different room? No, I don't no. want to. I don't want to. I don't want to condone broken marriages from spending too much time playing video games. So I'd rather him not have it. Thank you. Lauren, hmm. have you? What? Have you? I'm not ever, talking about No, ever sim raced. Oh, hell no. <laughs> but also no. Corey, describe your feelings watching the Richmond race. Because I watched it also while you were watching it. Lauren did not watch this one. Well, I texted, you. I texted you to make sure you were watching it so we could talk about it. I watched it. Um, I know you did. Um, Will Byron dominated. Um, and then you saw again, as we have seen with every week, people wrecking each other on purpose. Uh, Ryan Priest and Matt DiBenedetto got into it. I'm interested to see if that rolls over and carries over into real life, which – I think that it will, just because the. What is that noise? Here's here's why I think that people get so mad on on i racing, because a guy like Ryan Priest spent four, five, six hours a day all week long practicing, mm -hmm. right? So you add that up, that's almost a full work week, thirty hours, right? So now all of a sudden you get to the race, and a guy like Matt spins you out actually i don't know who i don't remember who did it first but so now now your race is over with after you just spent 30 hours doing it i'd be mad too right so then now that ryan priest considers his race is over he's going to make sure matt's race is over too because if i can't win you damn sure can't win either so let's wait on him or catch him again and then spin him out and then uh matt waited on him really junked him, I raced and kicked him out of the race while he was wearing a draft suit, and that was it. So after watching the whole race, I decided what my issue is with iRacing. I've, I've nailed it down what my problem is. Tell me. Okay. iRacing, the organization, takes it really, really seriously. True? 100%. Fox and NASCAR, they're taking it moder moderately, seriously. Yeah. There's some dad jokes. There's some, like, corny stuff going on. But they're taking it seriously. Like, all right, we're going to do this. My issue is half of the drivers are taking it too seriously, and the other half don't care at all. And so, as a viewer, I don't know how much emotion to put into it. Yeah. And that's I think a, that's my problem. And that's actually the common topic in the driver chat is be you know guys who have families they like to hang out with who don't want to spend a work work week learning how to drive richmond in a virtual car they want to spend time with their family say hey guys like can we limit some practice here because all it's you're really at the mercy of how much time you want to spend doing it and you know who's to who's to say what your work-life balance is right like if somebody has the time to spend all weekend, that's what they want to do to get good at I racing in Richmond, be my guest, right? But don't tell me or don't tell somebody else they have to spend that much time on it to have the same result. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit of a broken system. Uh, it's a great system for people to come in there and do it. But Jeff Gluck, listener of the podcast, had a good article on it. Um, that I agreed with him. I agreed with him, the topics he made three weeks ago. Uh, but I, I get hammered because I'm the guy who dumps on iRacing, which I'm not. I've always said that it's uh, a great thing. It's been a good thing for the sport to get people on TV. But um, when it comes to, like you says, people taking it too serious, um, I certainly, th I, I, I believe that's the case. And, and unfortunately, iRacing is the gatekeeper on uh, who can get in and who can't get in, right? There was a little bit of a uh, frustration between Michael McDowell because he was in, 
then he was out, and then he was in, and then he was out in the span of 15 minutes because he didn't make the cool kid list after he sold his sponsorship and they do all the social media stuff around it. I race and just up and told him he was in the last chance qualifier to race after he's done the last three weeks. So I don't think, I don't really agree with that. And I don't really agree with the process of who they allow in and who not, but not up to me. I'll do it this week, get my partners on TV, wave at everybody, and then uh, pray to God we get to real racing soon because I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of seeing it on every single social media platform, whether it be NASCARs. It just, it, I'm going to go on a little rant here. It oh. aggravates. Because Corey rant, Corey rant, time for a Corey rant. If you follow Formula One's social media, Twitter, Instagram, their social media level is here, tippy top. They they are showing old school in car cameras, old school uh, interviews. They are actually like enforcing the history of the sport and showing timelines and the politics and all the good stuff that makes you love the sport. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on NASCAR's platform, we're taking somebody's in-car camera from the iRace and putting Star Wars uh, graphics through the windshield like he's flying the damn Death Star. Oh, our podcast is done now. <laughs> that, that's my opinion. And I don't think that I'm, now I'm in the minority. Because, hey, why don't we show some – There was I was watching an awesome race on TV – from the 2004 uh, Rockingham Cup race. I love Avery Corey. Casey Kane and Matt Kenseth are coming across the line like this. My blood was pumping. I was fired up, and I was ready to get back to the racetrack. I pull out my phone, and I'm scrolling through. What do I see? I see Chris Bell, Chris Bell's car at Richmond upside down with his little, like, Ricky Bobby character inside there posted all over it. What are we even doing here? Post some good content. Post some good throwback stuff. That's what the people want to see. Well, I'm done. That's, my, that's what I'm saying. Matt D is in a draft suit trying to have fun. Landon has dedicated 60 hours of his life to try to win the race. And you have hang Clint on, Boyer on, 25 on, laps down on. going, oh, which What's race are we doing? Landon, Landon's employing two people to uh, – to do his Twitch, to chop videos, and to do his social media. Literally paying people to run his social media and cut videos for his Twitch while he's doing it. Wow. But, but then in the middle of the race, Lauren, Kevin Harvick is sitting there like this. <laughs> he's sitting there like this, and they're like, are you gonna get back in the race, Kevin? He said, oh, I have some repairs I have to do. I guess I have to wait 20 minutes for some repairs. And they said, those are, those are voluntary. Like, you don't have to do those. Oh. Really? Oh. Okay, I'll get back in the race. Then you got Clint Boyer 25 laps down, yucking it up every seven minutes. And I'm just like, I don't understand if I'm supposed to be, like, invested or if this is, like, a comedy show. Right. If it's a comedy show, I'm in. I think that's really fun. But if it's serious racing. If it's a comedy show, it would be way better. And I think that it kind of started as that, but then you get the manufacturers involved and you get the partners involved because it's on TV and it's gaining a lot of coverage, right? A lot of eyeballs. So why wouldn't you want, why wouldn't you want your partners to see that? And then also the only way you get on TV, just like a normal race is to be in the front. And the only way you can get in the front is if you spend six hours a day at doing it. So there is a, there is a, uh, balance level uh, of it. I, I don't. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what to do. But I'm much. I'm very happy to hear that we're talking about going racing the next month uh, versus talking about uh, where we're going to vir what ra virtual racetrack we're going to next. Alexa, did you watch the race? Girlfriends of these guys, they need to give them some projects to do at home. That's the thing. They're allowing them. Too much free time. I keep Andrew's weekend busy, okay? I need you to hang this picture on the wall. I need you to help me clean the refrigerator out. He doesn't have time. He wouldn't have time to do that. 
So oh. that's my PSA to wives and girlfriends of race car drivers who are allowing their husbands to do this iRacing. You need to be the boss, okay? You need to be the boss. Alexa, yeah. did you watch the race? I did not. I was at the park with my dog. <gasps> at the park? Oh my god. I know. Well, there's a park not far from us. It's like a quarter of a mile. And there's normally some of her other dog friends are out there so she can go play and there's not a ton of people. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what happened in iRacing. So anything else you wanted to say about it, Corey? Did you uh, send a congratulatory text to William Byron? No, I did not. Um, he, he did, I mean, he should. He, he is probably the world's best iRacer right now. Uh, I think we all could agree on that. But what is that? What is, I, I don't know what that gets you. Um, I mean, it gets you a couple wins on TV. Um, so good, good for, congrats to William Byron and Exalta and iRacing and all that. We'll, we'll talk about something else after the break. All right. And we're back. Before we talk about anything else, Daryl, okay. I want to give a shout out to our good partners of Go Fast Racing Audio Video Specialists because they were listening to the podcast a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know what we were talking about, uh, but I mentioned offhanded that I didn't have a smart TV, so I couldn't screen mirror anything. And Lo and behold, a couple of days later, a 65-inch Samsung TV comes showing up to the front door. Look at that. What is that screensaver? It's just like they got they call it like ambient mode or ambient mode where you can plug a background instead of just being a black screen that you can like have in changes and looks all cool. Wow. I like <laughs> ambient mode instead. The picture is incredible. I mean, I can do it. I can do anything on that thing. Well, yeah, I mean, look at that. You That's really cool. Videos. Congratulations. Welcome to 2020, Corey. Yeah, you got smart TV. Videos. I can do anything. So big shout out to Casey and the crew from Audio Video Specialist. Thank you for that TV. That was nice. Um, really? Well, so now I just tweeted that we need some questions for the podcast. Did you have any that you wanted to uh, I do. ask, Daryl? Now I'll just go ahead. NASCAR so, wants to know why Corey has two TikTok accounts. That's a good one to start with. Yeah. Um, did you see my TikTok, Carol? I make one TikTok account. That's my question. So I made one TikTok account like a long time ago just to make sure I got like my name. Nobody took my name. Um, and then I forgot the login password. So when I made this TikTok, uh, it was on a different account. And then I uploaded it and it was a different number. So it just – it was uh, – it was a disaster when I tried uploading that video. Um, did you like my TikTok? I thought it was good content, Girl. actually. I thought it was quality content. Lauren, did you see it? I don't yeah. watch TikToks. It was good. No, it, yeah, I put it on Instagram. It was like a choose your character for video games. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I took the dad with George that I went with. Um, I, see that. I feel like I saw something but, about it. Uh, uh what else what else we got daryl what you got uh let's see here have you called into chip ganassi racing and if offered would you drive the 42 car <laughs> uh, i have i have not reached out i'm sure they have a lot of people on yeah you know, here's the thing i i can't couldn't drive that thing this year i mean i'm contractually obligated to drive 32 um I'm not saying that I don't know what they're gonna uh, they're gonna be doing next year. Obviously, uh, they're gonna go. I think one of one of two ways where they could put a guy like McMurray uh, to fill the seat. Um, then that would be obviously a short term plug in, uh, or they can go Ross, which would probably be the long term play. And depending on what they did there, would be uh, how much interest I would show. But I mean, certainly. Chip Ganassi is a race winning organization, and I think any driver in my position would like to drive for him. This one's uh, for Kevin from Virginia. Oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, I like that. Kevin one. from uh, during your time at home, is there a particular skill you'd like to improve off the track 
or something you would like to get into. Uh, I've actually started to learn how to juggle. So I've YouTubed how to juggle. So I've got socks and I juggle socks. Uh, I'm getting a little bit better at it. I can do like the one handed with two of them. Uh, I'm not very good at the double with the three. So juggling is the skill I'm going to try to learn during the, the quarantine. All right. That sounds useful. This question's for Lauren, uh, from Clint. Lauren, how is Lauren's foot doing? My foot? Did you injure your foot? Oh, yeah, I fell out of my door. <laughs> I wonder if that's it. Yeah. I'm fine. It's what fine. happened? I don't know. I just walked out of my door and just fell. I do it all the time, but that time it finally caught it on our cameras. So I thought I'd share it. You guys have like that security system where you can watch like all the perimeter? Yeah. And you just went out there and just fell down. I just fell right out of the door and it was fine. Andrew said he was going to rub my ankle, but he never did. Follow-up question for Lauren. Favorite takeout meal and restaurant during quarantine? You are a food expert. We've been doing a lot of pizza. We're doing pizza like once a week. I've gotten really addicted to buffalo chicken pizza. Poppy, what are you talking about? Buffalo chicken pizza. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite meal right now from takeout? Uh, we've ordered breakfast from Toast the last like three days in a row. They have pretty good banana pancakes. Um, we're probably going to end up getting sushi from Ease in Burkdale tonight. That's one of our favorite spots. It's hard to obviously get fish and cook fish, so I like sushi. Probably yeah, get some sushi. Have you run out of chili that you made? Your apocalypse chili? Our apocalypse chili is still frozen. Uh, that's that's for when things really go bad. That's our that's our backup backup, out of food backup. Okay. <laughs> um, so Jesse Awuji, my buddy Jesse Awuji asked, how would it shake things up if cup playoffs added a street uh, race and a dirt race? Um, obviously it's shake it up. They're they're not gonna make any drastic changes like that this year. I, I know that that they were talking about that for the 2021 schedule. But I think that that's been probably put on hold just as much as everything else has. They're just trying to figure out how to get to the racetrack right now, what racetrack we're going to go to. Um, Joey Meyer, Brad Kozlowski's pilot, asked, who's a better welder, me or my dad? My dad can't actually weld aluminum. That's a fun fact because you would expect somebody that owns an aluminum fabrication shop to be able to weld aluminum but he can't that's why he had me for cheap labor when i was 12 he taught me how to weld or i learned i had to learn how to weld renee wants to know what has lauren recently tried to cook and more importantly how did that turn out um nothing i didn't cook one time last week <laughs> we got takeout literally every single day oh my god i did make what did I make? I made like, oh, Andrew had Jersey Shore on the other day, which I thought about divorcing him whenever I saw that was on my television. But they were talking about chicken cutlets and it was like 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. And I was like, you know what? Chicken cutlets would be really good. So I made chicken Parmesan at like 1030. And how did it turn out? It was pretty good. And that's one thing that I'm okay at making. But Lauren is not using all this free time to uh, learn how to cook. No, I don't want Andrew to expect anything of me whenever life goes back to normal. I don't want him to think that anything's going to be any different than it was before. I'm still going to expect to go to hibachi at least twice a month. What else you got, Corey? Sodium fix. Uh, Courtney Swink asked if she can get a birthday shout out. So happy birthday, Courtney Swink. Oh, hey, girl. Thanks for listening. But you'll be listening to it tomorrow. Uh, so happy birthday yesterday. Happy belated birthday. Here's, here's a fun one, Corey. Huh? Here's a fun one from Richmond Raceway. How was your Richmond sim racing experience this past week? <laughs> um, I, I thought I was competitive. I mean, uh, but didn't make the show. I mean, four of the top, the 
four of the top eight in the main race came from the last chance qualifier with the two provisionals and the two guys qualified in. So I, I had some stiff competition. I finished right behind Dale Jr. I think he finished sixth or seventh on in the main race, and I finished right behind him. So um, it was okay. 25 laps was enough. Um, That's hilarious. If you could race any track not currently in the schedule, where would it be? I would say Rockingham Speedway. Uh, I've won three late mile races there. And after watching the cup race there from 2004, uh, man, that track was badass. Um, and it's still not in terrible shape. I think somebody could get in there and uh, spruce it up and we could probably go. But problem is uh, the surrounding area is a little dilapidated. So uh, I think that that kind of doesn't bode well for us returning to Rockingham anytime soon. What are you doing? Uh, SM, uh, SMD Racing, do you, do you agree that Daryl could grow a Kyle Petty-like ponytail by the end of the national quarantine? Definitely. I think you could. Um, yeah. SMD, he designs most of the cars for Go Fast. He designed the Mystery Machine scheme last year, so I got to design some cool stuff. Um, I, uh, I, well, to answer your question, Guy, I am not cutting my hair until this is all over. I'm going to Aquaman it out for 2020. I'm going to Jason Momoa. I'm not, I'm not letting it, I'm not cutting it. I'm surprised my hair hasn't grown more. I mean, it's long on the sides longer than it usually is, but like after a, I mean, I usually go like four weeks between haircuts and I feel like it hasn't like got a whole lot longer. I'm not going to, I might not even get a haircut for 2020. I'm just mailing it in. Well, this is a good question though. Speaking of haircuts, Lauren, what is the plan? You notoriously told us that Andrew's very hairy. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any trimming? Oh, we still do. Um, we still groom his neck. I do. I do groom his neck. But uh, no haircuts. Yeah, I don't know. He did say that he might consider letting me cut his hair. So, if we do, I'll be sure to video it. There's a live stream I'd watch. What about you, Alexa? Are you doing any trimming of your hair? Are you getting a little <laughs> snip? No, I am um, getting real close. I'm on root watch. So we're going to find out how much of a fake blonde I am pretty soon. It's going to look ratchet in about a month. Are you doing haircuts for your guy? No, not yet. His is okay right now. It hasn't gotten bad, but we'll see. It depends on how desperate he gets. All right, Corey, what other good questions you got? Somebody wanted me to be your spotter. You said no. I'm disappointed, but whatever. No. Uh, I, I like this question from Stephen Blakesley. It says, if we made a NASCAR The Last Dance, uh, which driver and team would it be about? I'm interested to see what you guys have to say about that. I didn't watch that. It was, it was good. I need to watch it. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. So they're talking about the Last Dance documentary that ESPN made about uh, the like, 98, 98 Bulls. Um, yeah. Bill Jackson's last year, and it was the year where Michael Jordan went left after that. So um, two episodes in, it got six and a half million viewers, so a lot of people were watching it. Uh, my vote for a NASCAR last dance would be if there was any old school footage of like Alan Kowicki, because he had an interesting dynamic with his team. He owned his own team. There was a lot of, a uh, lot of great names that are still in the garage uh, that worked for him. So it'd be cool to see like the behind the scenes working of Alan Kowicki's, uh, whether it be his championship year or the year where uh, he passed away at Bristol and how they kind of recovered or, or tried to, I guess, just think, float through that. So, and I, I was a big Alan Quickie fan anyway, so that would be my vote. Corey, can we hear you do baby talk to Poppy? No, I, I don't do a whole lot of baby talk. Yes, I heard you do baby talk, Corey. I don't do a lot of baby talk. Who's a good <laughs> baby? Who's a good baby, Poppy? <laughs> Who's your choice, Daryl? Last Dance? Uh, Jimmy Johnson. Oh, that's a good point. He has really done what nobody's done through all the different eras, all the different cars. I mean, I would say Dale Earnhardt, but that's a little obvious. And plus you want to, I don't know, that's just, you know, I think Jimmy Johnson would be with everybody that's still available to talk to and around and 
you know, and besides there's the whole Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson, like Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan deal. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, I think that'd be, I think that'd be going, and you have all the technology now to follow J Jimmy around for the last, you know, the, if and when he makes the, the playoffs, like follow him through the playoffs, like one final time. Yeah. By the way, what is the plan, Corey, for the playoffs? I mean, at this point, is it a wash? Are we going to still try to do playoffs? Uh, we're definitely doing playoffs. I could see it getting pushed back a month, three, three, four weeks. Uh, I don't know, though. I know. I mean, there is nothing set in stone with the schedule. It's so fluid right now um, that it's not going to look anything relative to what we expected. So, um, you know, I could see us going to Iowa, possibly. <laughs> Nice. Um, just be like tracks that are tracks that are open uh, tracks that are NASCAR owned that might be in certain states that aren't allowing fans or even people to show up to we can go somewhere else that uh, tracks that, that are so I don't know hopefully it doesn't take away too many races from good tracks but right now I'm ready to get back going and get behind the wheel of a race car a real one alright any other good questions or are you good I'm I'm good. Kelly's going to walk, so I'm gonna try to catch up with her. But we got we got to do a clutch performer of the week. Clutch performer of the week, I think is Will Byron. He's smoking everybody's ass on i racing. He's won last two. Good job, William Byron. You are the clutch performance coffee performer of the week. Clutch yeah. coffee. Lauren, do you agree with that vote? Yeah. Because I can't think of anyone else. Alexa, do you agree with our vote? So Jeff Gluck is my clutch performer of the week. We're saying <laughs> he's sick of I racing because I agree. I think that Jeff Gluck is a great clutch performer of the week because, you know, he could tow the company line, but he put himself out there and said he's over it. That's he, right. He he did. Did. Will Byron, you're out. Yeah. Willie B's out. Yeah. Jeff Gluck's <laughs> The clutch, yeah, performer, the clutch Performer of the Week is brought to you by Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville, North Carolina. You can order Clutch Coffee Beans online and have them shipped directly to you. Go to clutchcoffeebar.com. And by the way, Clutch Coffee Bar, I would be willing to use your coffee beans every week if you get me a coffee maker because all I have is a Keurig and I don't have a job right now. So if you get me a coffee maker that I can use your coffee beans, I will order coffee beans from Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville. I just, uh, I just have a Keurig, so I got, I'll get rid of it if somebody buys me a coffee machine. You got to get the little thing that you can put your beans in. It doesn't work good. It, it, it does. It's the drippage is not proper. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying, Corey? Don't let that. Don't let those words ever come out of your mouth again. I'm having uh, drippage problems, Corey. I'm a little drippy oh, over. Hey, we can't forget to give O'Reilly some love. Because it's O Reward Bonus Points Month at O Rally Auto Parts. Stop in today for store wide savings, plus earn double points, double O Rewards points on all your sale items like wiper blades, motor oils, tools, accessories, and more. Not an O Riley's O Rewards member? No. Then sign up today online and, or in store and take advantage of. Bonus points month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's fast, easy, free, but hurry. Double points are only available for a limited time. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts. Better, better prices. prices. Every day. Oh, and that's oh, O'Reilly. All right. That's good. I'm ready. That was, yeah, good good job, guys. Hey, give us some give us some five-star reviews. We'll read them next week. Yeah. Buy us some t-shirts. I got t-shirts, hats. CoreyJoyRacing.com slash merch. Yeah, Corey's Sunday, not getting support him. Sunday money shirts. I got hats. I got some new camo hats coming in. Might match your shirt, Daryl. You might like it. You're not getting paid, right, Corey? I don't know yet. I got paid last month because we raced a couple times, but I don't know about this month. We haven't done anything, so I don't assume to get paid, but I don't know. I haven't asked yet. I'm waiting don't on royalty checks from the – so from the Sunday money shirts. I, got I, put a, I put like a 42 cent check in the mail last week. Maybe we'll get I got to go. Well, guys, Bye. good luck out there. It's crazy. <laughs>